Hi everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Thank you for taking time to be with us tonight for this health talk. My name is Beth and I am one of the care leaders here at 365 Cancer Prevention Society. I will be your host for tonight. Before tonight's talk begin proper, I'll just share a little about today's itinerary first. So there will be a main talk by Dr. Tan Chi Seng. The topic will be lung cancer in 2021, debunking myth, and updates on new treatment options. Of course, after that, we will, we will have a Q&A session. So throughout the talk, uh, you can note down your question and ask them later when we open the floor to Q&A. Also, as the talk goes by, you can also type down your question in the Facebook comment box as well. And of course, uh, in closing, I'll be announcing some uh, Facebook Live about, about next month's topic. So uh, our social media pages. So please like and share our event with your friends and family. All right. So this can help us uh, generate more awareness. And of course, do check out uh, Onco Care social media pages as well. So a little disclaimer first before tonight's talk begin proper. So dear audience, kindly note that all information shared at this event by the speaker and 365 Cancer Prevention Society are for general information only and subjected to changes. Do consult your doctor for personalized and detailed medical advice. Thank you. So we have an ongoing campaign. It's called uh, Let's Fight Cancer Together. So this campaign, um, the main, main rationale behind it is to encourage cancer patients with uh, lung cancer 
gynae cancer and colorectal cancer to seek consultation. The cost of the consultation will be donated to 365 Cancer Prevention Society by OncoCare Cancer Center. So if you want to find out more about this, you can take a look at our Facebook page. And uh, this campaign is running for three months. And what you see on the screen right now is the schedule for the respective cancer I mentioned earlier on. And to donate and find out more, you can also scan the QR code on the screen as well. So this, this talk is part of the Let's Fight Cancer campaign. And there will be two more upcoming talks by Dr. Lim Xiaolei and Dr. Thomas So. Okay, so I'll do a little introduction about OncoCare first. So this is their vision and mission. Their vision is to become a leading center in cancer care in the region. And their mission is by adding years and quality of life to all patients through efficient, knowledge-based, integrated cancer practice and personalized treatments. OncoCare is established back in 2007 and OncoCare is one of the largest and fastest growing private cancer center in Singapore for adult patients. They have comprehensive integrated oncology specialty center and what you see on the screen are the center all over Singapore. And these are the awards and accolades given to them as well. So these three, these, uh, these three speakers that you see on the screen now, they are respective doctors who will be the speakers for Let's Fight Cancer Together. And this is the services and treatment by OncoCare. So the diagnosis and workup of cancer for adult patients. They do inpatient and outpatient treatments, cancer screening, genetic counseling and testing. So the above is the specialization. These are the comprehensive adult cancer care done by OncoCare. And uh, for more info, you can also check out their website as well. So uh, before I invite uh, Dr. Tan uh, up, I will just share a little background about him. Dr. Tan Chi Seng graduated locally from National University of Singapore and he was admitted into the membership of Royal College of Physicians in the United Kingdom. He is accredited and registered as medical oncology specialist with MOH Singapore. He underwent fellowship training at Cambridge University, UK on personalization of treatment for lung cancers. He also has subspecialty interest in lung and head neck cancers. He is now a senior medical oncologist with OncoCare Cancer Center. We are very pleased and honored to have with us tonight, Dr. Tan. Hi, Beth. Thank you for the kind Hi, introduction. Dr. Tan. I'll now pass on the time to you. Thank you. Thank you for spending the Saturday, precious Saturday evening with me. Uh, today, I hope to share a little bit more about lung cancer, some of the common myths that I encounter on a daily basis, and I hope to debunk them for you. And I uh, hope you're going to share a 30 minutes talk with me. So this is the title of my talk today, Lung Cancer in 2021, Debunking Common Myths and the Update on the New Treatment Options for Lung Cancer. For those who are interested uh, for lung cancer, the color of the ribbon is that of a white color. These are the common four scenarios or common myths that I encounter on a daily basis for some of my patients. Number one, lung cancer is an old age disease. I'm young, so I'm not at risk at all to catch a lung cancer. Number two, e-cigarette, vaping, smokeless tobacco, water pipes or shisha are harmless, unlike the conventional cigarettes. Common myth number three, only smokers get lung cancer. Since I don't smoke, I will not get lung cancer. And lastly, lung cancer is a death sentence. My life expectancy is only in short months. I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts about the common myth. And uh, as I go through my uh, talk today, uh, some of the information will debunk some of the myth I mentioned earlier. This is the outline of my talk. 
first of all, I'll be talking about the local Singapore epidemiology and statistics about cancer in the whole. Uh, we talk about risk factor for lung cancer. Is there a role for screening? For example, we know that mammogram is useful for breast cancer. Uh, and also colonoscopy is useful for colon cancer. How about lung cancer? Is there such a role for screening? Is there, what are the signs and symptoms should I look out for for lung cancer? If there's any suspicion for lung cancer, what should I do? And what kind of biopsy can I do to confirm the diagnosis of lung cancer? Besides chemotherapy, is there any newer treatment options available? I'm going to share a little bit briefly about the tablet targeted therapy, or they call it tyrosine kinase inhibitor and immunotherapy. Okay, a little bit statistics about in Singapore, what are the top 10 causes of death in Singapore? Okay, you can see that cancer remains number one uh, cause of cancer death in Singapore. It constitutes about 30% of all death for the past couple of years. And these statistics are up to 2015, but the recent data also similar, showed similar trend. You can see that there's a distant second pneumonia and also ischemic heart disease of a, or death of a heart attack. And they only constitute about 19 and 16% respectively. This is a high figure and is mainly attributed to the aging population of Singapore. If you were to divide the types of cancer between the male and female, these are the, on the blue on the left, is that of a top 10 most frequent cancer in male, and on the right is that the top 10 most cancer female. Lung cancer is the second commonest cancer in male, and is the number three commonest cancer in female. In terms of the deadliness of the individual cancer, Lung cancer is a number one male killer and it's a number two female killer. So once we diagnose with lung cancer, there is a higher chance of uh, lung cancer progress and eventually cause death for patients, unfortunately. This is a breakdown of lung cancer in terms of the ethnicity by race. You can see that both Chinese male and Chinese female constitute about 86 and 89% respectively. Some may wonder, are we, are we uh, some of patients uh, who are Chinese in this audience, are we more predisposed to lung cancer? That's not exactly true. What this number shows is that it is mirroring that of a proportion of race in Singapore. Chinese constitute about 80 to 90% of the population and Malay about 10%, Indian and about 3 to 4%. So this mirror exactly like a Singapore population. As such, there is no predisposition for race Chinese to get lung cancer. This is just in proportion in terms of the national uh, population. Unfortunately, uh, for patients in Singapore, majority of patients who do present with lung cancer, they are diagnosed at the later stage. Stage three and four constitute about 80 to 85% of all the newly diagnosed lung cancer. Lung cancer do affect young patients. When I say young, I'm talking about probably below 55 years old. So in male, it constitutes about 10% of all the lung cancer diagnosis. And in female, probably about 15%. So if you remember, one of the common myths I do get uh, in my routine practice. So young, cancer, young patients do not get lung, lung cancer. So that is a myth and it's busted. What are the common risk factors that we see associated with lung cancer in Singapore? Tobacco, tobacco, and tobacco. Smoking is responsible for about 30% of all cancers related deaths in US. Very similar figures in Singapore as well. And it's the strongest risk factor for lung cancer. A smoker has an increased risk of catching a lung cancer by 10 to 24 compared to a non-smoker. Smoking also predisposes a patient to other types of cancer. For example, cancer of the oral cavity, throat, stomach, and there are other tumor who's also associated with tobacco smoking as listed here. Besides cancer, if you were to look at these are the association of smoking with cancer. 
Smoking also causes other bad health illnesses as well. For example, it has been linked to heart diseases, ischemic heart disease or heart attack. It has been associated with chronic lung diseases or COPD or asthma. And it has been associated with stroke, blindness and so on and so forth. Smoking not only causes cancer, but it also causes a lot of a chronic health problems for a patient who are on it for many, many years. This diagram is to illustrate some of the chemical compounds uh, one inhale every time they light up a cigarette. For example, um, methane is a type of sewer gas, nicotine is a type of insecticide, ammonia is a toilet cleaner. In the normal circumstances, nobody would want to inhale this, but every time a smoker lights up a cigarette, this is other very bad chemicals that they are inhaling and they're damaging lungs and other body parts. Tobacco is the most preventable cause of cancer and adult smokers typically lose an average of about 13 years of their life due to this addiction. Tobacco works causes cancer by causing multiple problems along the cancer formation pathway and it is regardless of the type of a tobacco that you use, not only cigarettes, you also occur in patients on cigars, pipe, smokeless tobacco, e-cigarettes, or even exposure. If you're a non-smoker, you're exposed to a secondhand smoking. All this increases your risk of catching a lung cancer in your lifetime. By the way, this is illegal, but there are people who still do e-cigarettes thinking that it's healthier than the conventional chemo, uh, conventional uh, smoking, or they call it vaping. E-cigarette has been the supposedly uh, nicotine addiction prevention uh, method because it supposedly does not contain nicotine, uh, and it's supposedly better because it has no tobacco. But if you, some of us might recall, a couple of years ago, e-cigarette causes a very damaging lung uh, damage because of the burning uh, required in the e-cigarettes uh, in US. In fact, some of the uh, e-cigarette users required uh, lung transplantation because the lung was so damaged. And tobacco companies are very clever. So what they have done is to change the burning sensation, the so-called heat, heated tobacco. But the problem with heated tobacco also uses tobacco. And in itself is back to square one where similar to a person smoking a cigarette. In fact, it's so bad that FDA came up to make a statement. There is no safe tobacco product. All tobacco product can lead to nicotine addiction. And more importantly, it, cause, it has a cancer causing chemicals and they can cause all the serious health problem that we have discussed earlier on. A couple of years back, I think in certain places, it's still quite popular. Uh, we're talking about sisha or hookah. Um, it's a type of water pipe. A CDC, a Center for Disease Control and Prevention, has estimated that an hour session of sisha is equivalent to smoking of 100 cigarettes. And you can just imagine the amount of nicotine that you inhale in that short span of time. And this has been um, promoted to young patient, uh, to young users, thinking that this is a social events. Uh, they make it a bit fruity to attract the younger uh, audience, uh, younger male and female, uh, to socialize uh, using the water pipe. Um, I hope none of our audience would be tempted to use this. How about smokeless tobacco? People thinking that it's the smoke that causes a problem. Unfortunately, even if you chew tobacco or even dip the tobacco, they can cause cancer in the mouth. It's so fagous, it's a food pipe and even in the pancreas. And this is also another alert sent out by the CDC. And once again, even though a smokeless tobacco, e-cigarette vaping, it can cause harm to the body and it can cause lung cancer. So the common myth that this is safe product is busted. Even if you don't smoke, but if you at the receiving end of a secondhand smoke, it has been linked to higher risk of a lung cancer in the lifetime. For example, 
if you're married to a smoker spouse, be it a male or female, there is an increase of risk of a lung cancer by 27%. If your parents are smokers, and especially they do smoke in front of the children, in a lifetime, there is increased risk of a lung cancer in the child by about 10 to 15%. And there is a very strong evidence to link this uh, to the exposure to lung cancer. There are other problems, occupations, uh, exposure to carcinogens or cancer-inducing uh, chemicals that has been associated with lung cancer. For example, painting associated with lung cancer and bladder cancer. Asbestos, for those who are old enough to know as asbestos, it has been banned in Singapore since 1987. But prior to that, it's a very common uh, material that is used uh, to retard fire in buildings. But studies have shown that asbestos has been linked to a special type of lung cancer and it has been banned in Singapore since 1987. Apart from exposure to carcinogen, the chemicals from tobacco, from paint, from asbestos, and is there any other risk factor? One of the common questions that I always get asked is, is genetic a problem for my patients? Lung cancer generally is not inherited. That means that you do not pass down the gene from the parents to you or you to your family members, the younger generation. There are, however, a certain mutation that is more prevalent in an Asian female non-smoker. And this is typically about 50% is called EGFR mutation or epidermal growth factor receptor. Male do get this mutation as well, but less common compared to female. There are other uh, less common genetic mutation that we see, for example, ALK, L translocation, and ROS1. But this one generally are less common compared to the EGFR. So another myth is busted. So doesn't, if you don't smoke, there is still a risk of you catching a lung cancer because of the association with the Asian female non-smoker at a higher risk of catching this EGFR mutation. Then a lot of a question that was asked during my consultation is, can we screen for lung cancer? Is there similar to mammogram or colonoscopy for breast cancer and colon cancer, respectively? In general, um, lung cancer is not suitable for general screening for general population. At the present moment, it's only recommended screening test for lung cancer instead of a low-dose computed tomography, or we call it a CT scan. Who should be screened if I mentioned, if you remember what I mentioned earlier, it's not for general population. A US a task force has recommend that a yearly screening for patients who are considered of a high uh, heavy risk history of smoking and who are currently still smoking or have quit within the past 15 years and they are of the older generation between 55 to 80 years old. These three criteria must be met. And if you do have uh, family members or you yourself are considered this, considered high risk, you should speak to your doctor to be considered for this particular screening method using a CT scan. The last MOH Singapore guideline cancer screening was in 2010, did not address this directly. And this recommendation has been around only about four to five years ago. So there's a little bit of catch up that is required uh, from a Singapore cancer screening point of view. It is so good to pick up the screen for everyone, but there are some risks involved. For example, we are talking about false positive. Scanning is not 100% accurate because it can cause you to have some anxiety. And if you see some shadow in the CT scan, you're obliged to do more follow-up tests. For example, biopsy, surgery and so on and so forth if the bi the biopsy turned out to be non-cancerous in fact actually is not needed and you you will have uh, undergone unnecessary biopsy or surgery a repeated radiation is also a concern because in the long run radiation itself can cause cancer in otherwise healthy pe uh, people as well 
So do discuss with your doctor or lung specialist on the individual risk profile before getting the lung cancer screening. The next part, the outline for my talk will be about the sign and symptom to look out for. If I do have the following signs and symptoms, do consider checking it out. Unfortunately, lung cancer symptoms are fairly non-specific. The keyword here is, for example, prolonged cough, the cough that doesn't go away with or without blood. For example, you have a blood stain uh, phlegm, you should be very concerned. Prolonged breathlessness, for example, if you get up and walk, if you're resting, you feel breathless, that is not normal. You should get it, check it out as well. Sometimes cancer do spread to other body parts, causing an unexplained pain and ache, may not directly related to the chest. This is something that you need to look out for as well. And other general symptoms will include prolonged tiredness, loss of appetite and loss of weight in a short span of three to four months, for example. If you do have the symptoms or the scan showed something abnormal, we need to confirm if you do have a lung cancer. And how do we do that? We re typically require a little bit of a tissue, to, we call it biopsy, taking out some of the tissue from the lung for further analysis, for further checking. There are two common methods that is used in the general clinical practice. Number one, bronchoscopy. Basically, it is what I call internal biopsy, where there is a tube with the camera going through the mouth directly into the lung. You can see on the diagram on the left here, and this is an abnormal tumor cells, and they take a little bit of sample and go for a biopsy. If the tumor is quite the further deeper inside, another method will be to directly do a needle biopsy. You can see that there's a long needle. The needle is no bigger than the general blood taking needle poke through the chest wall and into the lung and get a little bit of a biopsy. And this is a very safe procedure. Both procedures are very safe and typically done in the day uh, surgery option. And you can go home by the end of the day. Typically, you do not need to stay in the hospital to do these procedures. So once lung cancer has been confirmed, we want to know what type of lung cancer. In general, lung cancer are made out of two types, the green, Small cell lung cancer constitute about 15% of all cancers and large majority are a non-small cell lung cancer, constitute about 85%. For patients uh, who are typically non-smoker that I see, they are of the adenocarcinoma subtype and this is the most common type in the nervous smoker. This is a super busy slide. This is not for you to understand. It's for me to read out on a daily basis. Is You just need to know that lung cancer treatment in 2021 is highly personalized. No longer uh, treatment for cancer are chemotherapy alone. And increasingly, we want to find out what type of uh, lung cancer you are. And given the information, the molecular profile, we will give you a more targeted therapy treatment for you. For example, if you do have the first four, EGFR for example, and you do have the mutation, a tablet targeted therapy is all you need and you can do not need the chemotherapy immediately. For patients who does not have a mutation, they may go for a checking for the PDL one and if you have a high level, you are suitable for example for immunotherapy treatment. I'm going to share a little bit more about these two newer treatment options uh, with you all in a short while. These are the typical profile that we check for and um, this is more important for me to find out but for me to share with you that all tumor types in lung cancer need to be screened for these particular mutations. This is a little bit more detailed. Uh, I just want to share with you what happens in the individual cancer cell. What happens is that what there is a mutation in the individual lung cells. What happened, you just imagine it like a switch that cannot be turned off. They are perpetually in the on state. Because of that, they keep on propagating, they keep on doubling, they keep on producing itself. One cell become two cell, two cell become four and so on and so forth. And that's where the cancer comes about. 
what the targeted therapy, the tablet do is to stop the switch function, turn it off from becoming active and that produce the cancer killing property. TKI or tyrosine kinase inhibitor or so-called tablet targeted therapy are meant for patients who have this particular mutation that I mentioned earlier. I just want you to concentrate in this is a normal chest X-ray. A normal chest X-ray, this is a right lung, this is a left lung, in the middle is that of a heart. A normal lung should be blackish color and these are the ribs. This is a scenario that I see not too long ago. Mr. Y is a 54-year-old male, a lifelong non-smoker. In fact, he presented to my colleague for a problem of poor stamina. That was the exact word for the past three to four months, thinking that he, has, he needs to exercise, but he become more and more breathless over time. So he saw my colleague, they did a checkup, and unfortunately, you can see that the chest x-ray for this particular gentleman you can see there's a lot of white fluffy spots both on the lung side if you just go back one slide a normal lung should look black like this but for this one all the fluffy white shadows are actually tumors what this tumor do is to block the normal airway that's why mr one was very breathless and we did a biopsy and fortunately for him the biopsy we did for the molecular testing and it was found to be positive for this EGFR mutation. So this is a pre-treatment. He started a tablet medication. And about 10 days after starting the medication, I'm not quite sure if you can see, you can see that the fluffiness, the white spots are becoming less. And you can see that there are more black spots on the both lung. This patient prior to starting a treatment required oxygen tube. And fortunately, um, the after, and the effects are very fast within a, a week and a half he had gotten so much better and he can do not use the oxygen anymore this is another example of rarer mutation this is a tumor a colored tumor and after taking a tablet medication you can see that it shrank and no longer active so that's an example of targeted therapy and it's very useful very convenient one tablet a day typically Another newer treatment option that has been available for the past uh, five years or less will be that of uh, immunotherapy. You can see, you can read a little bit more. Uh, some of the social media, some of the Straits Times have been featuring about this immunotherapy. What is immunotherapy? This is a science journal. It's a very prestigious journal where there, every time there is a very breakthrough in any types of science, for example, they are the first one to, to um, uh, breakthrough of the year, Dolly the Sheep, cloning mars rovers first time we have reached mars and in 2013 a cancer immaturity was given a breakthrough of the year in fact in 2018 a nobel prize for medicine was given for these two pioneer uh, immunotherapy in cancer uh, this gentleman from us and this gentleman from uh, japan and they were both jointly awarded for this nobel prize because of their discovery of immunotherapy to treat cancers in the uh, in human. This is a patient of mine. Um, he had a lung cancer, unfortunately, spread to the neck node. And you can see that this is a very angry, very large neck node for this particular gentleman. I started him on immunotherapy. Within about two and a half weeks, the whole swollen neck uh, tumor has shrunk, uh, leaving a little bit of scar tissue and he has improved his quality of life dramatically within the two to three weeks uh, period. This is just a CT scan showing a similar uh, internal uh, swelling that has reduced significantly. So in conclusion, lung cancer remains one of the deadliest cancer in Singapore. And unfortunately, tobacco remains the main risk factor. If you do have uh, loved ones or family members, or you yourself is a smoker, do consider quitting it as soon as possible. Lung cancer screening may be considered for high-risk patients. We talk about the three criteria. Heavy smokers, you haven't quit, you have uh, you have uh, age of 55 to 80 years old, and you haven't quit within the uh, past 15 years. Treatment for advanced lung cancer in 2021 is highly personalized. No longer chemotherapy is a default option. 
we want to find a suitable treatment option, newer treatment options, for example, targeted therapy and immunotherapy for you. There are multiple treatment options available now, and they are shown to be more efficacious compared to the conventional chemotherapy alone. With that, I thank you for listening to me for today. Um, that's the end of my talk. Hi, Dr. Hi. Tan. Thank you for sharing with us tonight your talk. I'm sure all of us have learned a lot from you. So without further ado, let us move on to the Q&A portion for tonight's health talk. Okay, so uh, we let me just screen through first. We do have uh, a question from Chance. All right. So her first question is, uh, what is target therapy? I, I, I assume it's targeted therapy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So targeted therapy means that a medication that is very specific for individual lung cancer treatment for example, if you have a particular mutation, the EGFR I mentioned earlier, and if you do have that, a simple tablet once a day would be all you need to treat your lung cancer. Prior to that, the conventional treatment for lung cancer is of a chemotherapy. And you can imagine there's a lot more side effects with chemotherapy. And the good thing about targeted therapy is that they have a lower side effects and they are better in terms of the controlling the lung cancer. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Um, okay, so so Chance have a few other part two and three questions, so I'm just going to keep them coming. So what's the treatment for, for EGFR mutations? Mm. So EGFR mutation is one of the many, many mutations that we are discovering as we know more about lung cancer. And the good thing about EGFR mutation is that it's the commonest mutation in Asia, in Singapore, Southeast Asia and China and Japan for that matter. Uh, about half of non-smoker patients that I see on a daily basis are related to EGFR. And this particular mutation, you just need to do a biopsy. We send to the lab and the result can come out within a week's time. And if you do have this mutation, you it means that your lung cancer is because of this genetic mutation and we have a targeted therapy, uh, tablet medication to target this at the present moment, there are multiple market, multiple medications, uh, brands in the market, the so-called first generation, second generation, and the third generation. Each has its own, uh, own pros and cons, including uh, does it cover the brain metastasis, the cost issue. So I think all this has to be uh, discussed with the patient before a final um, approach to be given for the individual patients. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. So, um, do EGFR still require chemo after surgery? Mm. So, generally, um, EGFR mutation depending on the stage. So, for example, um, if it was first uh, being used for advanced stage 4 lung cancer, it has been shown that if you do have the stage 4 situation, EGFR is all you need at the beginning. And I have my record that the patient who are on this tablet medication for the past six to seven years and is still counting. So usually we do not want to lose the chance of continuing the tablet unless it's no longer effective where other treatment options may come in later on, for example, chemotherapy. But for patients with EGFR mutation, I will offer a targeted therapy first before we talk about chemotherapy. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. So moving on to another question from Chris. Okay. So are TKI and immunotherapy covered generally under insurance? Hmm. So um, in Singapore, we follow guidelines quite closely. We are very evidence-based. So if you are suitable for either the TKI, the targeted therapy, or the immunotherapy, you will be covered uh, under your MediSafe, MediShield that is covered basic for everyone in Singapore. For patients who have a private insurance, typically they will cover the rest of the costs incurred uh, by these uh, two targeted and immunotherapy. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Hope we answer your question, Chris. Okay. Uh, another question by chance. Can we utilize MediSafe for the targeted therapy you mentioned earlier on? Of course. So all cancer treatment in Singapore can use your own MediSafe and also MediShield. MediShield Life is a national insurance program 
for patients who have newly diagnosed lung cancer or ongoing cancer treatment, they can utilize these two basic uh, MediSafe and MediShield Life to cover for their cancer treatment. And I want to emphasize that this it can be applicable for both public and private uh, uh, care. And do talk to your oncologist to find out a little bit more about the coverage. All right. So um, thank you, Dr. Tan. Moving on to the next question from uh, Cheryl. So is it true that cancer patients should avoid red meat? Mm. So that is a very common question about diet in general as well. Mm. So for lung cancer, diet plays a lesser, co uh, lesser role. Unlike, for example, colon cancer has been associated with patients who re eat red, red meat more. But for lung cancer, dietary doesn't play a major role. So as such, if you're talking about lung cancer per se, there is no specific uh, need to avoid uh, red meat. Uh, in fact, I do encourage patients to continue to, to continue to take their meat to supplement protein so that they can have a robust body health so that they can fight the cancer better. Thank you, Dr. Tan. So, um, Cheryl, we hope we answer your question. Um, okay, from Nancy, should lung cancer avoid sugar? <laughs> so, there's another common uh, question that I always get all the time. Uh, so, there are a lot of uh, local pantang or some of the myth that they read online um, pertaining to sugar. Uh, if you eat sugar, you will give the cancer cell boost. Um, there are studies that are looking at this particular question. Generally, um, we do not think that uh, eating sugar in the normal uh, amount constitute or make the cancer more aggressive. Uh, you yourself, body, requires some form of sugar. In fact, whatever that you eat, carbohydrate, noodle, rice, Will eventually be broken down to a simple sugar for the body to absorb. Um, so generally, sugar per se does not cause the cancer to get worse or become way more aggressive. You do not need to avoid. But I always advise my patient do eat sugar sparingly because for the general health purpose rather than uh, for the cancer control. All right. So um, moving on, we have an interesting question by uh, Priscilla. So about the secondhand smoke, how long do we need to be exposed for it to be harmful? So for example, if we walk past someone who is smoking, will that cause any damage? A transient, uh, transient sniff of uh, second smoking, for example, you pass by Orchard Road, people just uh, smoking at one corner, generally does not cause uh, you to have a higher risk of lung cancer. It's more of a prolonged exposure uh, for example, your spouse that you married for decades or your when you're young, your parents uh, smoke in front of you. So we're talking about more than 10 years kind of exposure before your risk of uh, lung cancer start to develop becoming higher, 10 to 20% in your lifetime. Um, in Singapore context, because we are, live in a very compact environment, another problem that I do encounter is that of a neighbor smoking. Um, so it can be inconsiderate for, for, for neighbors to smoke and some of the smoke come to your place and it, it's not, you can move away. Unlike Orchard Road, you walk by, you smell the smoke and you just walk away, but home is where you stay and you come back and you want to rest. But I think it's a problem. I think there's a lot of a debate about this in Singapore, making it illegal to smoke in the home. But until then, um, whenever you, you can avoid second smoking, for example, uh, neighbors or family members, that will be the best uh, prevention for future lung cancer uh, in yourself. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. I, I hope we answered your question as well, Jesse. So she was asking about non-smoker. I, I think it's relevant to what you have answered. So I'm just going to move on to the next one. All right. So uh, Chance is asking, is it true that uh, emotional stress can trigger EGFR mutation that cause lung cancer in women? Mm. So Usually stress is not the main culprit uh, and that has not been uh, fully identified to be the cause of the EGFR mutation. I do personally believe that emotional turmoil um, and does lower the overall body immune system. And because if you are more susceptible, let's say, for example, you have been a second smoking or you yourself a smoker, there may be a slightly higher risk of uh, uh, developing a lung cancer. But emotional turmoil per se, uh, stress, depressed, uh, doesn't constitute, doesn't make you to be more 
uh, prone to get the EGFR mutation. So in a way, that is a good as well. All right. Thank you. So um, next question by Lydia. All right. So what is the best treatment for ACC? ACC, I assume you're talking about, are you talking about adenocarcinoma? So if you're talking about adenocarcinoma, generally, um, it has to depend on the mutation. Uh, depending on what we see, the molecular profile, then we will give you the best treatment. It could be in the form of targeted therapy, if you have a specific mutation like EGFR, or if you do not have, or pd one is very high, then the immunotherapy will be useful for you, for example. All right. So I think she, she, she did acknowledge that that's the one she's talking about. Okay, so uh, from Jesse, so how about carbon monoxide smoke? Will, will we inhale it uh, and cause lung cancer? Mm. So if you remember one of the slide, um, carbon monoxide is one of the common uh, chemicals that we inhale in a cigarette smoke, actually. Um, so carbon monoxide is also found commonly, for example, in the car exhaust fumes. Um, if you are in the line of, uh, for whatever reason, exposed to car fumes a lot of uh, hours in a daily basis, that itself can be a problem in the long run. It's as if you are smoking on a daily basis, as even though you're not smoking. Mm. All right. Thank you. So uh, this next question, please pardon me if I interpret it wrongly. So when target when targeted therapy is not suitable so may maybe she's asking about when is it a scenario where it's not suitable for mm -hmm. for lung cancer patients mm -hmm. so um, targeted therapy is not suitable if you do not have the mutation okay um even though i say there's a 50 percent chance of you getting a mutation uh, until we do the testing we will never know and i would never offer a targeted therapy even though patient requests for it uh, if I cannot confirm that you you have the mutation, for example, EGFR, because studies have shown that if you do not have the mutation and get to give you the targeted therapy, it has zero effect. In fact, it's like a placebo. And, uh, and that would allow the cancer to continue to grow, and that's not good for your cancer control overall. So first thing first, establish whether you are a candidate for EGFR, for example, targeted therapy EGFR. If you are, yes, by all means, try to get yourself uh, started on the targeted therapy. If you have negative mutation, that's when other options may come in. For example, a uh, patient on immunotherapy, or if very unfortunate situation, everything fails, nothing is suitable. We may need to fall back on chemotherapy. And increasingly, we are adding chemotherapy and immunotherapy together to have a better effect for the cancer. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tan. So um, from Priscilla, so uh, does a person's face turn black when they have lung cancer? Are there any visible uh, physical symptoms? Mm. I'm glad uh, somebody asked this question. I think side effect is always a concern when we talk about lung cancer. I, I think the mental image for us because of the media, because of a lot of TV series that we see, um, everybody lose hair. Uh, fortunately for lung cancer, uh, if you are on targeted therapy, on immunotherapy, you will not lose hair. In fact, you will look exactly the way you are. Uh, that's, that's very fortunate. And there would not be any darkening of your skin. Um, but that would not be the same case if you were on chemotherapy, for example. So we do know that chemotherapy, depending on the, sub, uh, depending on the chemical that we use, some may lose hair. And there are newer generations of chemotherapy that may not lose hair. And uh, very rarely, chemotherapy for lung cancer specifically can cause darkening of the skin. I would say probably less than 5% of lung cancer treatment can cause that problem, unlike other types of uh, chemotherapy for other tumors. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let me look through. Okay. So um, we have this question coming in. All right. So I have family members with uh, lung cancer. So uh, does that mean that uh, I'm at a higher risk for developing lung cancer? Hmm. So I want to emphasize that lung cancer is not something that can be inheritable, meaning that your grandparents pass to your parents, your parents pass to you. Uh, it's got to do with more in the environment that you live in. For example, if you live in a house of smokers 
of course, you are slightly higher risk of catching a lung cancer in your lifetime. It, it doesn't mean that your parents have lung cancer, you definitely will get a lung cancer. It's more related to the environment that you're exposed to. Okay, thank you. So uh, next question is coming in from Lily. Okay, so what treatment is for uh, brain metastasis from lung cancer? And the second part of the question is, uh, can targeted therapy cross the blood-brain barriers? Wow, <laughs> that is a very specific question. And that's an excellent question as well. Classically, um, when there are no options available besides chemotherapy, we do know that chemotherapy is very difficult to go to the brain uh, because it's a very large molecule. And a lot of time we require additional treatment for brain spread, brain metastasis, including surgery or radiotherapy. You can imagine a brain surgery and radiation to the brain cause a significant side effects compared to a conventional treatment. So by and large, fortunately, for example, a targeted therapy in a newer generation can go to the brain and start attacking the brain cells, the cancer cells, and cause it to shrink. Um, I would reserve surgery or even radiation to a much later stage and I will use a more suitable targeted therapy to control the brain metastasis at this junction. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. And um, okay, let me see. Uh, okay, we have this coming in. So is chest x-ray a good way to screen for lung cancer? Mm. So chest x-ray, unfortunately, is um, a poor uh, uh, investigation if you want to look out for lung cancer because of the resolution is very poor. Um, I, the analogy I always give my patient is that uh, you are using a full HD TV versus uh, using a 4K TV using a CT scan to look at the uh, internal lung function. Um, it's always better to use a higher modality, high resolution scan to confirm whether or not you have a lung cancer. So chest X-ray has been studied extensively last time, the past 10 to 20 years, and it is shown to be no better than not doing an X-ray to diagnose lung cancer. As such, that has been abandoned for quite some time until the CT scan uh, uh, come into the picture. All right. Thank you, doctor. So uh, this next question from Priscilla. So for people who work as a painter, are there any method or measures to lessen their risk of getting mm. lung cancer? Mm. So... That is a problem for a lot of uh, uh, painter last time. There are two things that has changed uh, in recent years. The chemical they use in paint has changed significantly. Uh, this is industry effort. So I think some of the chemicals that we do see uh, has been lessened, but it's still there. That's number one. Number two, if a person who are painter by uh, occupation and uh, what the, we re usually recommend is to wear a specific uh, mask to filter out some of the vapor that they encounter during the uh, process of painting. So that itself can reduce, but not 100% uh, uh, disconnect the patient, uh, painter from the risk of a vapor inhalation. All right, thank you. And uh, next question, does yearly CT scan, chest to pelvic, will it cause radiation and scarring in the lung and eventually lead to lung cancer? Mm. So that is always a concern um, so radiation using a CT scan is slightly higher compared to a normal chest X-ray. Uh, but fortunately, our current technology has improved significantly. The radiation dose that we use now is probably 10 times less compared to the older generation of the CT scan machine. That's number one. Number two, even using the older generation uh, machine with high radiation dose, the chance of one getting... Uh, cancer or damage to the uh, bodily where it's scan is probably less than 1% of developing a cancer in your lifetime, but it's still a one a less than 1% chance. Um, so I would recommend that you only do it if you are considered a high risk. For example, the three criteria I mentioned earlier, heavy smoker, uh, you have an older age, 55 to 80 years old, to do the screening. If not, then generally I do not advocate a CT scan for a general population because it exposes you to unnecessary radiation and in your lifetime, 10 to 20 years down the road, there's always a less than 1% chance of developing a, a cancer. Okay. 
Thank you, Dr. Tan. So next question is coming in from uh, Pooja. So how does the TKI uh, kill cancer cell? Mm. So if you remember this one of the slides that I mentioned earlier, what the EGFR, for example, the mutation does is to permanently switch the on function of your cell. A normal cell, they will need to switch on for a while to create a new cell and they die off. But what happens is that this mutation doesn't allow it to switch off. They are permanently in the switch on position. They produce more and more cells, a cancerous cell. That's why it becomes uh, a big lump and start to spread to other body parts. What targeted therapy do is to attack the Achilles heel of this particular function where they switch off uh, forcefully of the switch on function in the cancer cell and thus cause the cancer cell to die. So this is a very simplified analogy that I described to my patient how it works. Cancer cell on function that cannot go away, targeted therapy, forcefully switch it off and to kill it. All right, hope we answered your question. So uh, next one, I think this is very relevant to uh, today. So um, can I receive a COVID vaccination if I am on cancer treatment? Hmm. I think there's a lot of concern about vaccination while on treatment, be it chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. I think initially there's a lot of uh, skepticism about vaccination. That's number one for cancer patient, thinking that it's a very unsafe but a lot of data after millions hundreds of millions of vaccinations has been done a lot of data coming from israel group from the us group and show that number one it is very safe and the side effects of cancer patients while on treatment receiving covid vaccination is no worse compared to the normal population that's number one it is safe and number two in terms of efficacy may drop a little bit, especially when you're on chemotherapy. But if you're on targeted therapy or immunotherapy, the same effectiveness has been found uh, compared to the normal population. So as such, given that fairly safe, no worse than the normal population, almost equally effective, I will advocate COVID vaccination for all my cancer patients. And I strongly encourage them to get it as soon as possible, given the very bad uh, uh, COVID numbers that we see uh, for the past two weeks. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Tan. So this next question, uh, okay, is a bit technical. So what is the difference between squamous versus non-squamous lung cancer? And uh, which one is more aggressive? Mm. So this is uh, just a different subtype, different types of lung cancer. Squamous means that uh, what they see under the microscope when they do the biopsy. A non squamous typically are anything besides no, uh, squamous, for example, adenocarcinoma or large cell. Um, the only difference is useful to note that squamous cell are related to smoking, and squamous cell has a lower chance of you having a positive mutation, for example, EGFR. So that is all it means. But if you do see a patient uh, having an EGFR mutation, even in squamous cell, you will still offer it a targeted therapy for that patient. All right. Thank you. And uh, I think due to time, we'll take in one last question. All right. So is, um, is order by a medical oncology for yearly CT scan to follow up checkup for breast and colon cancer? Um, I think maybe she's asking whether, you know, is it okay for a yearly CT scan or... If I interpret it wrongly, Jesse, please clarify. Okay, with that information, I try to answer the best to my ability. Um, if you are targeting, if you are doing a screening for breast cancer, a more effective, more accurate way would be to do a mammogram if you are above 40 years old. Um, so that can see the breast tissue much better than CT scan. That's number one. Uh, there are cases where you do a CT scan for breast and you may miss a, a very early breast cancer. So for breast cancer specific, mammogram is the way to go. If you're talking about colon cancer, there are two methods of screening. Number one is to check for blood in the stool. Uh, if this has to be done yearly, a second option will be to do a camera scope through the uh, large intestine at the anus area. Uh, that if it's clear, you can do it once every 10 years. 
and this are, has been advocated for general public. Everybody above 50 years old for colon cancer must do. We advocate breast cancer 40 and above. For lung cancer, we do not advocate screening for the general population unless you are considered high risk, heavy smoking of a certain age, 55 to 80 years old. So I wouldn't advocate a general CT scan of the whole body just to check for all three cancers at one go. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your questions today. I think it's been very insightful. So, so in closing, I would just like to uh, take this opportunity while Dr. Tan is here with me to remind uh, everyone that uh, they can come in for second opinion with Dr. Tan uh, at a subsidized rate due to this uh, campaign that we are running right now. The dates are at the uh, at the flyer that, that I mentioned earlier on. So you can do check out our Facebook page and or their, their website as well. So uh, with that, let's, let's thank Dr. Tan for today's sharing and uh we hope we hope to see you again soon thank you dr okay. tan good night thank you for the time have a nice weekend okay so i'll do a little bit uh of uh, closing and uh, introduce next month's uh, facebook live as well so the topic for uh, next month will be in uh is mandarin okay it's it's about uh level so it's uh can i zhen duan yu zhi liao? So the speaker is uh, Li Guanhui Yisheng. He's a senior consultant in NUH. And uh, the date for this talk will be on the 16th of October, uh, same time at 8 p.m. on our Facebook platform. So this, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, is part of our Let's Fight Cancer campaign. So this is uh, conducted by Dr. Lim. It's for uterine cancer. And next will be the last of the series from Dr. Thomas. This will be on the uh, colorectal and um, is on 13th of November. So before we end off tonight, I'll just inform about the social media again. Do follow us on the Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and uh, like and share and share with all your friends and family as well to create awareness. And of course, do check out Uncle Care Center as well. And we will really appreciate if you can uh, scan this QR code to give us a little feedback about today's session so we can continue to improve to serve you guys better. And of course, you can find the link pinned to the comment uh, in, the Facebook, in the Facebook thing. All right, so we have come to the end of uh, tonight's health talk. So uh, have a great weekend ahead. Good night, everyone.